Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of The Shuffle Pod. We are now on episode number 18 and we have a continuation of our collab episode with the Pittsburgh Podcast. We have, of course, the Pittsburgh Podcast on our podcast now. So what's up, yes. y'all? How are we doing today? Thanks for having us. No worries. Thanks for deciding to uh, do the collab episode. Uh, the episode we recorded for uh, their podcast was pretty good. If y'all haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out. I'm sure at the end they'll like plug everything like the socials and where you can find for sure for sure the, uh, the pittsburgh podcast yeah so this episode we got some pretty juicy stuff to talk about now we are recording this before toronto toronto is going to be literally why well, as the time you're watching this it would have already have passed but as we're recording toronto is in like two days from now yeah. so we're going to be doing a lot of meta discussion with toronto of course we kind of predict a lot of stuff that could come true for toronto we also want to talk about some other uh, juicy news, of course. Uh, there were some interesting DQ situations that did happen at LEIC that we do want to talk about. And then uh, we got some other cool things we got to talk about. Of course, we want to kind of dive into the history of how the Pittsburgh podcast became a podcast. Um, but yeah, I think before we get into everything, of course, we got to do our weekly roundup segment here. So we'll start off with Lindsay. How has your week been? Oh boy, do I have a juicy one for you guys. I'm changing it up a little bit from my usual routine of working every single day. I got a haircut for one. I got Pokemon Violet. I very I've I have mixed I have mixed opinions about all of that. Um I won't get into it, but so far it's it's a pretty good game. Uh Foy Coco has been my starter of choice. What it was, he sold me when he was like when they have you choose your starter. Um, Fue Coco just goes into the corner and just like stares into the distance. <laughs> so that that's what sold it for me. Um, I have some family in town, which is pretty fun. Um, my one year stream anniversary is coming up. So Ooh. that's kind of crazy. Um, what else? Oh, and so for our little showing off portion for today, I have some of my graded cards that I just so I actually, I've had this one for a little bit, but this one, it's a shiny leafy on, you know, very, very uh, fitting of me, <laughs> um, but it's a, it's my gem mint 10 shiny leafy on from Hidden Fates. I got my, my lady, nice. my ladies who she's a 10. <laughs> I have this Japanese X and Y promo trade, please. Mm. I just, I really love this artist. <laughs> And like, I just thought that that was such a funny card that I had to have it basically. And then lastly, I'm just going to show this one here. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, it's really, it's, it's, um, an artist that I really, really like who does the Pokemon cards. And it's like this wheeze I'm, I'm describing or not wheezing coughing, uh, with his eyes really, really far apart. I actually did share a picture of it on Twitter. So you can go look at it if you want to see how hilarious <laughs> this card is. Um, but that's kind of really it. Um, what about you, LDF? What is what have you been I, up to this week? I mean, I've just been having the the usual LDF week, just making content. Um, I guess the past couple of days have been kind of interesting. Um, I've been pre-recording a lot of videos for Toronto while I'm away, so I got to make five videos in advance for Toronto. I think I'm gonna do a vlog though, so that'll be I think Monday's video. I'm gonna do a vlog. Mm. So I asked Twitter if y'all wanted to see a vlog, and a lot of people want to see a vlog apparently. So I might have to do a vlog. I don't really have a good way to vlog my camera. I might just have to use my phone, but. That's fine. Mm, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I could just use my phone. I got the iPhone 14, right? Because I remember I told y'all. Pro camera. I told, yeah, exactly. I got that yeah. pro camera. Because I I had to get a new phone anyways because my old phone was broken. Yeah. So I, had to, I just was like, ah, my phone's broken. Instead of replacing the 12, I'll just upgrade to the 14. So here we are. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do a vlog. It's the first time doing a vlog. So hopefully I can uh, do good with it. I, I'm good friends with like another YouTuber who's like a vlogger. So I might ask him for some tips and advice on how to vlog. And plus my best friend's literally a vlogger too. So, but speaking of my best friend, so me and him have been hanging out quite a bit, doing a lot of Funko Pop hunting. Unfortunately, I don't really have any new Funkos to showcase. Um, <gasps> I've had to hold, well, actually I did buy a Justin Bieber Funko Pop, but uh, I've been and trying to- And the dart <laughs> one that you sent me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the dart one. I got, I got a Chase Dart Funko Pop. Um, nice. But I've been kind of trying to hold back on the spending. I don't want to. I don't want to keep blowing money on Funko Pops. I gotta save some of the money for Toronto and stuff. But um, yesterday at like 10 p.m., so I recorded a meta pod. I reported. Uh, I re I recorded a meta forecast video with PJ and a couple other people. 
and then we finished at 10 p.m. And then right after, me and my buddy drove two and a half hours away almost to go pick up the Breaking Bad Funko Pops, which are like really expensive and hard to find. He got like Heisenberg, Jesse Pinkman, uh, Saul Goodman, which is like a really good one because of like the, the show Better Call Saul. So yeah, we drove like two hours away. It was like a two and a half hour, three hour trip in total uh, wow. just to pick up some Funko Pops. Yeah, we got home at like 3 a.m. last <laughs> night. Nice little late night road trip. Um, and then today, uh, yeah, oh, I also got a haircut. Look at that. Yeah, I needed to get a haircut really badly. My hair is all over the place right now. I just got out of the shower, so wearing a hat. But yeah, I got a haircut. Needed one for Toronto. Got to look fresh for Toronto. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to have the long hair anymore. I like long hair, but like I was like, ah, it's, I'm getting tired of it. So I'm like, right, I'm going to get a haircut. Got to look fresh for Toronto regionals. And that's really what I've been up to. Other than that, yeah, just making videos. Haven't streamed in a minute. Just haven't really had time or motivation to stream or the energy to stream, unfortunately. But uh, I think I'm going to resume the streams when I get back from Toronto. Um, but yeah, what about uh, what about you two? How, how's your week been? We'll start off with Chuck. Uh, just work. It's been uh, crazy with work uh, at the moment. Uh, also trying to uh, track down uh, my lost collection and uh, mm. <laughs> figure out how I'm going to get that back. Uh, for those that, yeah. well, uh, if <laughs> you haven't you, listened to you, <laughs> our our uh, our half of the podcast yet, I, I've missed uh, misplaced half of my uh, tournament worthy uh, decks at a at a tournament uh, at a venue closer to Jake's house that's not really close to me anymore. So uh, Jake's got to go pick that up for me, and then uh, then I'll have yeah. my deck that I hopefully will be able to play. Uh, on Toronto, but that that's just by a stressful week there, and then trying to figure out uh, how to practice uh, with said collection missing. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, working, chilling. I I don't have any graded cards to throw show off, but mm -hmm. uh, I have been working on a pretty cool collection that I can show. Uh, that uh, it's I don't know half the world may hate it. But I'm trying to complete a rainbow from Sword and Shield on. So uh, this has been uh, a, a labor of trying to get every rainbow pool, even though no one likes the rainbow wow. pools. Wow. So yeah, you uh, like them, Chuck. So I like them. Hey, I, that's I love a them. Cheaper hobby. It is. Yeah. So uh, currently, uh, cheaper uh, is hard because I still need to get Serena, which is still like a fifty dollar card at the moment. Yeah, I got so a lot for that. I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm caught up. I'm actually caught up to just Silver Tempest. So, um, but it's been uh, one I've been putting together, and I'm hoping that will be a cool collection if they decide to uh, ever stop printing rainbows, which uh, some people might be excited about, but not me. <laughs> yeah, it could mm. happen. I could see it. It's weird. Yeah. Rainbows, they, they do better in real life for some reason more than obviously online because right. on PC Joe, yeah. I never use rainbow rares because they're just so they're they're hard to see. You know, yeah. I prefer my gold and my full arts, Same. my old arts. Same. Yeah, because I fully bling out all my decks. I don't use rainbow rares because I think they're just ugly. So, yeah. <laughs> So I like you, how's your week been? <laughs> I, I like them in real life a, a lot more than I do. Like uh, you are correct online, they are ugly, um, and they are really like harder to read. But uh, for me, yeah. for whatever reason, I just uh, I like the rainbowness just on the trainers. I actually hate it on the Pokemon. The Pokemon, I find yep. it, it's just just as hard to see what what's going on on that card. Yeah. But uh, I just like the rainbow effect. I think the the rainbow is really cool. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so my week, um, kind of talk about uh, our, our pod uh, earlier this week. Uh, I, I had a, a pretty crazy fall, um, hurt myself pretty bad, um, and been trying to recover from that. It's actually, I feel a lot better even since the last time we recorded on, on our podcast. Uh, so it's been like uh, three days or so. Um, and then just kind of preparing for, um, for Toronto again. Um, uh, getting some PTCG L in because I've been playing a lot on L because it's on my phone, so I can play at work on breaks and stuff like that. So that's been PTCG L. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I still Ooh. haven't converted my account over. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I, I still kind of have two, but it, they make it so easy to get the cards for um, for all the meta stuff right now. Um, and I had like um, I have like four of these ETB things filled with code cards, just random assortments. So it was really easy to get the Stardust. Um, to just get everything I needed. So um, 
you know, that was, that was that. And then, um, you guys were speaking about haircuts. I still need to tomorrow. I was going to shave this down a little bit, um, yeah. and clean up the back hair. Um, not that I have a lot on the top, but, uh, at least, you know, make it like fresh, like you guys said. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. And as far as like show off stuff, um, Lindsay said she had some graded cards. So I had some in the background that I was going to show off. Um, I haven't got these like recently, but uh, these are my like my four favorites. Um, some of my favorite Pokemon here. Um, so all of these I pulled myself. Uh, so I got oh. I have the mm -hmm. uh, the Shiny Greninja GX. Uh, love that card. Ended up getting the 8.5 on it. Uh, Dragapult, as you can kind of see in the background, Dragapult is my favorite Pokemon. Uh, so I've got a Dragapult uh, VMAX, a 9.5. And then these last two, um, there was a pretty nice story to them. Uh, this first one, it was one of our first live streams, like uh, pack openings, uh, and ended up pulling this live on stream, uh, Pikachu uh, Rainbow, as you talked about, you don't like the, uh, the, the Pokemon uh, <laughs> version of the rainbows. Uh, but I do like this one, uh, and I got it sent off and got a, a PSA 10. So Nice. Um, Let's go. Love that one. And then this one's kind of the same vein. Um, one of my favorite cards, the Mew Alt, Ooh, uh, which yeah. I pulled myself. Um, there was a funny story behind this. I was, you know, chasing like everybody else was at the time last year. Um, my wife and son got me a bunch of product last year of, of um, Fusion Strike, uh, ETB, uh, booster, booster boxes, uh, a bunch of just, uh, you know, the, the loose packs. And I think I had like 80 something packs from Christmas last year and pulled Sheesh. absolutely nothing out of like those 86 packs. I pulled Sounds a regular like view. strike. I know. So yeah. I was like, I'm done with it. But uh, but during the course of, you know, December last year, work was crazy. So they they had this like incentive. If we worked on a Saturday, they would uh, uh, buy us a, a Amazon gift. So I I told my boss to buy me Pokemon cards. <laughs> so he bought me Pokemon cards and we were at lunch <laughs> and the, and some of my coworkers were like, you gotta just open them here. If you open them at work, you'll pull what you're needing to. If you bring them home, you won't get anything. So uh, I they convinced me, uh, I was in the middle of our whole lunch area and I, I pulled this big bad boy. Um, and everyone's like, ah! Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I was I was so pumped. Uh, and then, you know, got it sent in and, and then get it, got another 10. So I've, had some pretty good uh, luck as far as, uh, you know, the PSA uh, 10s on the, my personal pulls. So uh, those ones uh, kind of mean a lot to me. So Yeah, I didn't pull any <laughs> <Right> of these. <laughs> right. <laughs> but what I did pull. Oh, yeah, I'm Lugia. still waiting. I'm still trying. <laughs> Is the alt art Lugia V. I'm now two for two on the on the big alt arts of the... The sets, the Lost yeah. Origin. I I pulled two Giratina alt art Vs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed you that got, one too. You got like one in Japanese, right? Yeah, one Japanese one, one English one. That's a cool flex. Yeah. Yeah, and like I'm telling you, I was like, we were, I was went to locals for the first time in forever last week. That's another thing too from the my weekly, I guess. Um, but I was like, you know what? I have the ir I have like an irresistible urge to just buy a booster box, and I hate buying booster boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, so we ended up getting the Silver Tempest one and I was like, you know what? I was like, I think, I think something's in here. Dylan right. can be my testimony. I was like, I think that this is going to be, we had opened three boxes and they were all terrible. So we were due. We were due. Like always, if you guys have questions or suggestions, topic ideas you'd like to hear, even recommend guests you would like to see on the podcast, send that over to podcast at the shuffle squad.com and we will get to it. But speaking of getting to it, a way to save yourself 12% on your order? What? If you're looking for a great price on any and all Pokemon TCG, you guys got to go to atlascollectibles.com. Use that code TSS12 because it's going to save you 12%. You could also go to ptcgostore.com and use code TSS5 to save yourself 5% on your order. It directly helps support us here at the Shuffle Squad. With that being said, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to our guest at Pokemon. Um, so this, of course, was brought to you by PokeX Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. Are you guys ready? Let's yeah. do it. Yes. Let's so it. I have the Pokemon, and it's going to be you three working together. So we are starting. Ooh, I'm not sure which generation this is. My, I'm, my lore knowledge is not good. <laughs> Yeah, Ellie, Ooh, wait, I, I hope you know Gen's okay. real well. 
I, I get confused on which Pokemon <laughs> is from what gen. No, I do, I do. This yeah, one's I'm... this one's a little bit easy. I got this. I got this. <laughs> so your Pokemon is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters from generation two. Generation oh, we already two. Know what generation so seven is from. letters. From Gen 2, yeah. Yeah, seven okay. letters from Generation 2. We we Gen felt like that was a little bit easier than just being like, this has seven letters. Go. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Gen 2 uh, is... Guess? Oh, that's... Is that... Is that uh, okay. Who are the starters in Gen 2? Why am I blanking on them? <laughs> I don't know if any of the... I think all the starters... Like have more than seven letters, though, because I was thinking that too. Like it's a starter? every time, he... no. Oh. no, 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 no. I... Or is it? That's I don't how... know. Yeah, it could be. That's how I base my generation. So if I know the starters, then I can figure out which Pokemon to like kind of guess from there. So that's why I was trying to figure out right. which ones were there. Um, I have a Pokemon. The ones in my after mind, so. Squirtle. <laughs> yeah, I think I know. I think I have a guess, but I'm not sure. Is it seven letters? I don't know. This one's uh, Cyndaquil, Chikorita. Totodile. Yeah. Totodile. Yeah, totally Totodile. Beautiful. You can go ahead with your guess, Jake. Mm, is it Scyther? Good guess. It is not Scyther. Is that seven letters? Is it six? You mean Scizor, right? Yeah, because Scyther is Gen 1. Wasn't he ten, Gen... Like, are you saying the video games, though, right? Wasn't he not in the first video game? Like red blue? So we mean like they are like the Pokemon. No, like, like Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like okay, which generation okay. it's from. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. I guess Scissor wouldn't be a bad guess. Scissor's only six, though. That's true. Yeah. So All right. I got a okay. guess. I got a guess. I got a guess. What's your guess? Blissey. Good guess. Ooh. It is not Blissey. No. So we'll move on to the. Well, oh my gosh. The Pokedex entry kind of gives it away. Mm. So before then, I'll give you the type. The type is electric. Okay. <sighs> is it? Wait, you guys want to guess for I guess because I got my Pokemon. Chuck has to throw one out. Them all, uh, Pokemon. No, the only thing I'm I can so think bad of with is like, Patrice, like, but that's I don't... not even right. Um, yeah, like, that's Gen Four. Oh, we're not even <laughs> yeah, to get mean, after this. Po <laughs> uh, you get to the Pokemon <laughs> a lot faster than me. Oh. So, like lightning, is that? What gen is that? What gen is Emolta. that? See, this, this is this is how good guess. No, I, I that was I was memeing on myself. I was memeing on myself. I was memeing on myself from uh, a couple of weeks ago on our trivia. Mm. Um, See, I'm telling uh, you, I'm usually never good at these trivias, but like I'm telling you, when like when we recorded your guys' episode, I was oh, like, yeah. Medicham, B. Yeah, you, that was you said that within like three, like not even three seconds. I don't, I, I don't, mm. unexplainable. It's electric. Uh, She's so electric. So, Oogie, Chuck, Oogie, Oogie. Uh, they, they already had Raichu as Gen 1. And only yeah, Gen letters. 1's Raichu. I, I got mine, so I'll let you guys I'll let you guys think. Because I think, because I got my answer right here. I think I already <laughs> know what time. it is. It's in, it's in my head. It's in your mm -hmm. noggin. I'm just trying to struggle. I'm struggling. I'm gonna, I mean, like, that. I have to, like... No. Electric. No, Jolteon. Oh. No, no, Jolteon. Wait, crap, is that 6? Maybe my Pokemon's not 7. Wait, let me yeah. recount that. Spell again, LDF. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw you spelling. Spell again. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, no, my Pokemon is six. Spell it again, LDF. <laughs> spell it out loud for the class. <laughs> F-L-A-A-F-Y. No, that's six. F-F-Y. Wait, what? Wow. Oh, well, is it? What about, yeah, what you, about the right, other? I'll, I'll let you guys. You're the guest. Uh, you you say what it is. You say what it is. Well, I, did she just give it away? Was it Flaffy? Uh, yeah, it's Flaffy. <laughs> it's Flaffy. Um, I didn't want to read the Pokedex entry as the next hint because the Pokedex entry is in the places on its body where fleece doesn't grow, its skin <laughs> is rubbery and doesn't conduct electricity. Those spots are safe to touch. Mm. You imagine touching a flaffy, you're like expecting like a soft little lamb, and it just yeah, get like rubber. <laughs> mm -hmm. That would be crazy. The skin, the skin is just rubber. Yeah, see, I was thinking flaffy, but like I, oh, I forgot that it has two Fs. In well, when I, I googled when I googled the generation, mm -hmm. um, I typed in F L A A F Y. So yeah, 
Yeah, I keep forgetting that it's two Fs. I was long double A, A's. double F. Double yeah. A, double F. Double F, yeah. I didn't even know Flappy was Gen 2. Uh, I'm just bad. So. We learned something new today. <laughs> Me either, honestly. That's why I had to look it up, and I was like, wait, that's actually kind of surprising. Poke X Word, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day, and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at PokeXWord.com, and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. With all that out of the way, let's see and let's discuss how did y'all get into making the Pittsburgh podcast? I would love to know what got what got y'all into making it. Now, another question. What has been your favorite episode to film so far of your podcast? Ooh, and how okay. do you two know each other? Okay, go. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a big, <laughs> a, big ask. Yeah. There's a lot of questions. I got, I got answers. I got answers. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, if Chuck, if you want to take it away, go for it. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can start the the backstory of how me and and Jake came to know each other, and and um, where we got the the idea for the podcast, where we came up with the idea for the podcast and things like that. Um, so, me and Jake both we've played competitive games uh, before Pokemon, and we met playing a different competitive uh, miniatures game, not necessarily a, a not a trading card game. Um, though there are cards in the game. But uh, we played X-Wing, uh, and that's how we met. Uh, at a tournament there, I actually had to borrow something from Jake because I had broke my own miniature during the tournament, uh, which you're supposed to have <gasps> one to play. Uh, so then I had to... Jake came to the rescue. Didn't really... Uh, we just met that day. Uh, and then he let me borrow one of his extra models to finish out the tournament, which I think in the very next game I ended up breaking his model in the tournament so <laughs> uh met the guy broke his model but he was super nice about it uh repaired it got got him got it fixed uh and uh yeah i had to vote him for like uh we had like a best sportsmanship award i gave it to jake in that tournament because i mean i broke his stuff and he's <laughs> still a nice guy about it so but yeah that's that's like the funny story how how we met because i i met him and broke his his stuff but uh that's <laughs> that's that fine. started the friendship there <laughs> uh then we got we uh you know bonded over playing x-wing and then uh i always also dabbled in trading card games at the same time but uh jake came to me which he can fill in the blanks with the idea of starting to play pokemon competitively um and we've just been running with the ball since there about two, almost going on three years now ago. Um, and yeah. like for me, historically, I've played a, a bunch of different card games uh, competitively. Uh, I've played Magic. Uh, I've played, um, I mean, I played Pokemon for a very short time in the 90s uh also uh but in the in between uh any any card game that might have had a, an in, an ounce of competitive I've, I've played a little bit of it uh but um really growing fond of pokemon which is definitely taking me to uh to more events of higher uh stature and things but jake fill us fill in the blanks that i left right right so as I was transitioning away from the game of X-Wing, um, I jumped into Pokemon. Uh, you know, I was I got some packs for my son originally, um, you know, and, and relearned or I, you know, I collected like everybody else in the 90s. Um, but then, you know, started looking at these cards. And I'm like, oh, this competitive game seems pretty cool. Um, so, you know, as I transitioned away from there, started playing um, around pandemic time, right before pandemic. Um, and then after, you know, pandemic hit, um, you know, we, we were playing online, got Chuck kind of involved, um, kind of got involved in the local community community here in Pittsburgh, um, and then just fell in love with the game. Um, and both Chuck and I are very competitive people. Um, and we we wanted to start a, a well, a, we also had another uh, friend, too, that was kind of in that same uh, journey, um, Nick Yurko. Um, he was he him and I um, were the two that first started the podcast because um, we're all um 
super competitive uh, players, and we wanted to kind of start like the journey of a competitive player from ground zero all the way up to hopefully being, you know, a champion of a regionals or something like that, because we we've had success in the other games um, going into those kind of uh, similar events. Um, so we, we started doing that um, and just fell in love with, with the podcast, got to meet community members, um, you know, you know, for some some competitive players, some, you know, collectors, some some YouTubers slash streamers. Um, and then, unfortunately for Nick, uh, life kind of got in the way, so he had to kind of step down. Um, while Chuck was still involved with the podcast, he was doing, uh, like, our meta reports of, of the week. Um, and he de he definitely just jumped in there um, and then, uh, you know, just took off from there. And uh, we were kind of slowly made changes throughout the, you know, the, the history of the podcast. Um, added some trivia sections, um, so, you know, getting to know um, our guests kind of stuff. And we, we have bets back and forth. We just recently had a, um, a like a fantasy draft uh, of, of LAIC. Um, and we put like funny things on the line for betting um, and like punishments and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of the origin story of uh, the Pittsburgh Pokemon podcast. So um, it's been it's been a blast. Um, wouldn't trade it for the world. I keep telling Chucky that yeah. even if we had one listener every week, it doesn't matter. Um, I just, it's just a time to hang out with friends and, you know, talk, talk Pokemon and the game we love and, and you know, just yeah. hang out. And that's kind of what it, we're all about here. Uh, trying to get our community or ourselves and our community um, from that ground zero all the way up to um, high level play. And, you know, we try to do that um, through our podcast. Very yes. well said. Yeah, Chuck, I unfortunately have not gotten to be able to meet you, but I have met Jake and mm -hmm. I can confirm Jake is very nice. I don't know what he would do if I broke his stuff, though, but um. <laughs> I would forgive yeah. you. <laughs> it's OK. As long as you didn't well, do it on purpose, if you could take, you take one of my graded cards and snap it, maybe I'd be a little right. mad. But if you, know, you did it on accident, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty laid back when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Let's uh, it, see. He grew on me real real quick, so <laughs> hmm. yeah. Right. I, I mean I'm a very competitive person, but I, I and I, I've had my moments of maybe um a little bit of sourness. Um uh, but generally I feel like um you know what what sets like Chuck and I apart is you know, we, we have that competitiveness, but we're always willing to teach um people um and and along the way and and try to be a good sport about it even if we're not having a good day because you know pokemon uh, is kind of a game of luck for uh at least for me i think it's mostly like op opening hands and deck creation um but like sometimes even at that when you create the perfect 60 you could still blank out so um yeah that sometimes you get a little sour over those though yeah. right yeah definitely definitely a lot of probability and luck that can be involved um do not disagree at all. Um, but speaking of luck and probability, what do you guys think about LAIC and the fact that like Lugia was what, like 64% of the day with, and I, I haven't really played that much Lugia, but I've heard that the mirror Ooh, is I've basically a, <laughs> a coin flip right now. Um, I have thoughts on it um, on the on the mirror because I actually really enjoy the mirror match because uh, I mm. think it's a lot more than people say with it with it being just a coin flip going first. Um, Chuck, do you mind if I take this one at least to start? No, you, can, you can take this. I I, I agree that it's just a coin flip. So uh, I, I okay. So I, I'm gonna. I, it, it, it is. <laughs> It is a coin. We're it, Palkia lovers yeah, over yeah. here. Well, I love Palkia too. I, I'm always I, I, either way. Um, so, <laughs> with with Lugia and the mirror matchup, um, no matter what variant you're playing, of course it is better to go first. Um, but there are definitely things you can do going second to give you so, your, yourself a a pretty good chance to winning. If you're going second, it is imperative that you keep a basic Pokemon that is a one prizer up in the active. Um, even if they set up with a Lugia um, and an energy involved or, you know, where they have a God set up where their whole board's already evolved. Um, typically, it's it's hard for them to do their whole combo and gust you on their first attack. So if you force them to take that one prizer um, and you already kind of set up a board, you definitely want to get two Lugias get down uh, going second. Um, you can oftentimes still... Um, jump ahead with with your first knockout on the prize race and now they're forced to go through it um, and maybe they're not going to be able to do that so there, there is a lot of give and take in that mirror match and 
it definitely is the first maybe four four turns total between two both players that kind of really sets that up um, but there's definitely a lot of um you know room for leeway um in, in that mirror matchup obviously though you want to keep those basic pokemon to something that maybe a stout land can't take out pretty easily um because then that kind of just takes that strategy out um but I, I enjoy the mirror match because it is definitely about managing resources and so i feel that you know the average player or even slightly above average player sometimes has a an issue with that so if they get a little greedy um they can definitely just lose because they have overextended themselves pretty early yeah yeah not as forgiving as a deck as mm -hmm. maybe some of the other other top ones we've seen in the past so definitely some interesting thoughts on it it's i think it's one of those things kind of like everyone kind of forgot that like Palkia was like most of the first tournaments that came out like i think i think that right. i think that toronto will not be as much lugia yeah, there'll uh, be more. There'll, there'll still be a really high um, success rate. It'll still be the most played, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And you, you had a good point. Uh, when when Palkia came out, it was eight out of eight of the top uh, eight. I mean, Lugia was six out of eight. Um, so, you know, yeah, as dominant, maybe not, but it's. It wasn't so good, 60% though. of the field, though. Like, that's the right. other part. Not that it yeah, was actually that, six, but like, it was. Lugia was like 30% of the entire thousand player tournament. Like,. I don't think yeah. Palkia ever really hit that number. Uh, Mew might have hit that when it came out. It's just the amount the the amount in the field is what kind of like makes it too crazy. Like top cuts. I mean, I think anything can just sweep a top eight. Even like uh, what was it? How many was it the Reggies? I don't think it's happened very four, often. Were four Red, of yeah was the Reggies were four of, but they were like like the seventh or eighth most played deck. They just did, they performed well. Like you can sweep a top cut and not be the most prevalent deck. I mean, obviously, if you're 30% of the field, you should have a high percentage in the top cut if it's a good deck because they all should what be is. performing well. Um, but it, it, I I just find Lugia not my style of play. And in, in I'm a little salty that I can't play Palkia as much anymore. So I mean, it definitely has kicked Palkia down to the curb a little bit. Um, because yeah, it really did. Yeah. The, the deck it kind of kicked Palkia, Arceus, and Giratina to the curb, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I mean, Giratina still has a chance because it's attached to the Lost Box engine, and it can be almost yeah. as versatile. But I think mm -hmm. another another reason this deck is seeing so much success, it's not even just the energy acceleration, which it's, it's just insane if you get set up. Um, you can text so many different attackers. We've seen most people go with the, the Amazing Rare Boxes, um you know pick or choose who you want to be your attacker um but yeah. you, can, you can go the tank version um which i actually prefer uh the the sharon's care version um with other tech attackers that we can talk about i guess a little bit later but there's always mm -hmm. different things you can do for different matchups so there's like we we saw laic so we might see some you know kind of counters and we kind of talked about this on our podcast where there might be some kind of like um stalling or or you know s some um you know echoing horn and stick them in the active or something because lugia doesn't have switch and that's our biggest weakness right now um but they can easily just now tech like a bird keeper in or something so they always have answers for basically anything even if it's a hard counter for it right yeah, like and even like backtracking a little bit, talking about like look at Sander, like how mm -hmm. many people, how many people are like our little testing group, like four or so, like only right. like four or five of them play that deck, and I think like when they did the Mewtwo control, I think like almost all of them made it to day two, right? Mm -hmm. And like they were like the good. only few, yeah, they yeah. were like the only few playing that deck, and like Sander, like anytime he does that, he always like is up there at the top. So Sander and his group, I, I feel it's like like. He's like the, that local that's always like anybody's local, no matter where you live, um, that always has that off the wall deck um, that's like, oh, I can just I'll beat everything. And then, you know, oftentimes that that player, um, you know, has waves of success, like every so often he'll win a tournament. But generally it's kind of like middle of the road. But like that he's that player, but on steroids that always makes <laughs> that that deck um, that most people roll yeah. their eyes at actually good and so like that's why he's like just like one of the best players in the world yeah it's like an evil genius right um <laughs> yeah sander is really good at playing control decks like he his control decks are so like 
they're so good at what they do and nobody really expects it. Like nobody was expecting Mewtwo V Union to ever be a control deck. Everyone's right. like, oh, play with Arceus, you know, play with Shadow Rider and then all of a sudden yeah, then it, don't play it at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then then it comes out as a control deck and then it becomes one of the best decks in the format and kind of flips the format on its head and makes me makes us change the way we look at the format. 100%. Um I guess we can kind of talk about some of the Toronto expectations. So I guess going from LAIC to Toronto, one week later, what are we thinking? Like, do we think Lugia... So my question is, really, I want to know. What do you think of towards Lugia deck going into Toronto? Is it the optimal Lugia deck? Or do you think there's any other Lugia decks, like any other interesting Lugia concepts that could become good? Because I think Lugia does still have a big target on its head and it's going to be the most played deck of Toronto and you got to expect to hit a lot of it. And if your deck can't beat Lugia, you're not going right. to do well. Yeah, do you think there's any new Lugia decks? I think decks, the Oranguru is cute. I think Oranguru is cute. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's it's really... You, you, oh, sorry. Got lot, sorry, <laughs> I was going to say, like, got, like, so many energies in your hand. Like, it can be helpful to kind of, you know, start to put some of those back. But right. my thing is, like, with everything else going on, um, you don't really have the deck space too often. Right. The, right. The deck space is very crammed. Uh, I think the deck list is solid with Oranguru being able to manage resources. Um, but, you know, no offense to anybody, um, m most people can't manage their resources like Tord. Um, so, I yeah. like, a Rangaroo, um, even, like, it, it, in theory, yeah, you can just save those energies. But I feel like the the Aurora build um, is just harder in general to manage that better, especially mid to late game. You have to um, make t really, really tough decisions. Right, right. Um, and, and, and on top of that, like, if you're playing Raikou and... and um, and Yivital, um, basically you have to save all those energies for those two attackers if you ever want to use them both. Um, and if you prize one, it's really bad or really bad for you. So I I, I am going to play Lugia, but I'm going to play yeah. more of the mm -hmm. the bland colorless. I have, I mean, I did throw a Charizard in there because it, he's so easy to get up and running. Um, and actually, I have another one tech, uh, one prize attacker since you know this is. That I'm probably gonna use. It's been pretty Spilled good in test. It's it's been. And this is going out after Toronto. It's so. going out after Toronto. It's been pretty good in testing. And most people don't. If most people aren't going to tech for it or expect it, it just slaps because it hits oh V maxes it? and it hits Vs um, and it hits single prizers pretty effectively. Reggie Gigas? No, because Reggie Gigas only does uh, V maxes. Really, I mean, he's okay against V, uh, regular one prizers, but he can't really take those Okos on the V stars, but Wait, I'm going to take a guess. Is take it guess. Lugia? It is Lugia. It yeah, is, I, knew it. Is, I knew it. It is, it is Lugia. Lugia. So it's a little dun, awkward, dun, dun. uh, because his attack, the, the attack cost isn't that big of a deal, uh, for th four it's colorless. Yeah. Um, same as Lugia V. Yeah, it's the same as Lugia, Lugia V, yeah. um, for 250 damage. And again, if you put those, um, strong energies, um, you, you, you can, uh, Take a knockout on basically anything. That I mean, it's a little awkward because you, if if your opponent has five or fewer cards, um, you know it doesn't do anything. So it's definitely a late game. It's good against like Lost Box Tina. It's good against uh, Mirrors if they're if they're not expecting it. You can just kind of get another one prizer out of nowhere. Um, and it's been pretty good in, in testing too. Uh, so and it's also very combative. We'll share and scare too if if need be. Uh, every so often it niche it niche uses. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Colorless Lugia tank box. Right. That might be good. That might you be heard good. it here first. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I, I'm still. I'm, I'm a player that's always so close to making cut. I think I've 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 been one game off cut three times uh, since you know the the start or start of play after pandemic. Uh, hopefully, this this baby Lugia can get me uh, get me to the cut. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that, maybe that can be one of our, like, one of the, the underdogs for Toronto that people are going to talk about. They're going to yeah. be like, yo, you see that Lugia inside that Lugia? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the well, Lugias there is... can play five Lugias <laughs> in a deck and just be... <laughs> five Lugias in one deck. Yeah. What? <laughs> <gasps> what? <laughs> there you go. Thumbnail Insane shot. Insane <laughs> busted. There it is. But um, <laughs> another underdog tech card that I think a lot of Lugia players are looking at right now is actually Blissey V. As Blissey is how you kind of beat the control matchup because you can use Blissey V against Evil Tall and they try to yeah. remove all your energy. You just go Blissey and put it right back on. So yeah. a lot of people are thinking about playing Blissey. The only problem with Blissey is it's really awkward against Mill Tank. You don't really have an answer to Mill Tank with Blissey, right? You go Blissey, you build up the energy, 
eventually you'll knock out evil tall they can't they can't keep uh resource out resourcing you with evil tall the problem is they'll go mill tank and then you got to figure out how you're going to deal with the mill tank you probably could play like a cologne but like that's just so bad to play a clone in a don't Lugia you just deck. play uh don't you just attack with archaeops yeah but the problem is you have to move the ballista to the bench it has a four retreat cost oh i see what you're mm. saying yeah and you have oh, to give escape, up bro. yeah you have to give up a lot of resources to go into the archaeops which obviously is like you think when you're playing a lugia deck you're just like very like tunnel visioned you're like Oh, I have Archeops my deck, so I don't ever worry about Lu uh, Mil Tank. But Mil Tank is awkward because it forces yeah. you to like retreat and waste your energy and your resources, and that can get very, very annoying very fast. So I'm not sold on Blissey, but Blissey does counter the Evil Tall pretty well. Yeah. What do we think I, of that? I, I I like Blissey. I've been playing Lugia on on live uh, on, on PTCGL uh, with a mm -hmm. Blissey in there just because. Eventually, you get enough energies in there that she does a lot of damage. Um, and if right with 300 HP, you usually can find yourself to tank one hit. Like, if you can hit first with it, put a bunch of energies on it, tank mm -hmm. a hit, and then you can do really big damage. If you, uh, even if you, without having to really commit maybe more than one Archaeops' energy to it. Um, right. So... I like it as a as a cleanup like smash hitter at the end or something to tank a hit, but the uh, every time it goes into the active, like you said, LDF, it kind of stays there until it dies mm -hmm. uh, because right. yep. that four retreat isn't like uh, isn't it's something a big you're boy. really. Blissey's yeah. a big boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you it... if you don't get to attack, then you may not even have the energy on it to retreat. So yeah. I think if you're going to play Blissey, you probably want to play Switch or Charon's Care to, like, move it. Because you could also start with it. It's not bad if you start with it, because you can just go, like, Lugia and then, like, Archeops a billion energy to Blissey out of nowhere. But it's still, like, awkward right. and not the ideal starter you want. So if you're going to play Blissey, I think you do probably want to play a Switch or Charon's Care or something to try to counter the uh, Blissey getting stuck in the active. I do think that Mew is going to be really popular because I feel like it's going to be a little bit like, um, what was it, Baltimore, when Reggie was very popular because gift energy was bugged. So yeah. no one was playing Reggie, no one expected it, and then everyone showed up with it. I think it's going to be like that with Mew because of the four seal stone bug. No one's really playing it. Mm. I mean, they're still playing it a lot online, but like, yeah, the four it doesn't stone even work. makes Mew so much better um, to get out of that path lock or to get that early game consistency. Um, yeah. You know, both versions are still very viable. Um, definitely the, the Aurora ver or um, the, the, the Fusion Strike version is uh, very scary for any deck, especially if, you know, most people still want to go first on their decks. And if mm -hmm. you, you flip over and your opponent has uh, Mew, you're like, uh-oh, uh, am I just going <laughs> to lose going second? So it, it's, it's yeah. definitely happened to me uh, on a couple of these tournaments uh, for sure. Um, so I think that's the Seal Stone definitely helps the Mew for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree one, on that one. One one more thing I want to talk about, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess, with um, Lugia seeing so much success, I think a lot more people have already started putting the big Paracel in there for specifically yeah. the the Aurora version and the Yvetal. Um, so I, I do expect to see uh, non Lugia decks have a little bit more um, answers for for those for those uh, amazing rares. Yeah, I agree. I think um, Lugia might have to start playing double vacuum now to counter Big Parasol, because Big Parasol is also going to be very popular in Duraludon, mm -hmm. which is another matchup. Um, I can also see Lugia checking in Path to help counter Duraludon. Uh, yeah, yeah, some yeah, versions already, run like four Path. I feel yep. two Paths I don't okay hate... against it, but but yep. yeah, I see the point, well, too. Path is just good in general, I feel like, even exactly. against It can the win mirror. in the mirror, too, right? It helps mm -hmm. you in the mirror. It can be really good against any deck relying on those abilities, on rule boxes, and I think Lugia, I, I actually think Arc Duraludon is going to be a very popular deck in Toronto because it's an easy deck to play. Yeah. Um, it's also, a lot of people just like, are kind of like, they just tunnel vision. They're like, oh, this deck is immediately auto wins Lugia when it actually is a lot closer than you might think. I actually think Arc Duraludon is 50-50 against Lugia because of the vacuum evil tall and the fact that they'll knock out your Duras before they evolve. And of course, you always have to use Arceus, which means you have an Arceus in play. Which is also going to be a knockout, and yeah, I, I think that I think that Arctura is definitely popular. It's going to be popular in Toronto. There's not really like a counter to Arctura. Really, it's just you got to play Vacuum. Dura is going to play two Paracels. Mm -hmm. Dura is one of those decks though where it's very 
inconsistent at doing what it's supposed to do. It's, it doesn't have like a draw engine. It's literally just a bunch of supporters and prey. Yeah. And they have all the healing and stuff. So Dura can sometimes fumble to its own kind of bad draws or awkward draws or just whiffing stuff because no Crobat, no Luminia, no built-in draw engine. It's just yeah. kind of you just play Research and Marnie and you, or Chorus and you just kind of hope you see what you need off of that. And it sometimes yeah. doesn't work out that way. So Get your, get your RCS uh, set up early and if it doesn't, yep. eef. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I could see yeah. Arcdura being popular because North America loves Arceus, so... Yeah. I uh, actually... That brings me to kind of what I want to talk about next, though, about Arceus. So, a lot it, of people are kind of... A lot of people are on the train of Arceus is dead, it's not very good, and I'm kind of... I agree with that. I think Arceus is a lot worse than it used to be. It has a really bad time against Lugia a lot of the time, and even with Mew, Mew, it even has, like, a bad Mew matchup sometimes when they can knock out your Arceus. It definitely being, can. Yeah. But I do think there are two different Arceus decks that are good right now and that are worth trying out. There's Arceus Duraludon, which is the first one. There's also Arceus Beedrill. Now, I think Arc Bees is a sleeper deck for Toronto. And you're, you're on Arc Bees, Chuck? You're doing Arc Bees? It's, it's an option. Uh, it's an option. I'm, I'm, I, I'll, I'll get into what I'm playing for Toronto or what I'm my two picks for Toronto are. And I'll talk more about that. But uh, yeah, I think Arc B is actually really good. I don't know what you play Arc Bees with if you just go Arc Intel with like the Mustard Beedrill engine. I don't know if that's good. Um, but I do think Arceus or just Beedrill in general has potential at Toronto because Beedrill is really good against Lugia. You have a really good trade into them. You insta kill Lugia by well, only giving up one prize card. And it can be very awkward for Lugia to deal with Beedrill sometimes. So I really think that Beedrill is going to be... I think we're going to see Beedrill pop up in Toronto and do pretty well because I think it's like one of the better Lugia answers people have been bringing up. There's been so much discourse on Twitter the past week about what's good against Lugia. And I think Beedrill is one of the best options against Lugia. Like, I think it's better than like the lightning attackers yeah. people have mentioned or even like... I agree. Like, I think yeah. it's better than the lightning attackers. Yeah. yeah. It's better than like Dusknor and even... I think it might even be better than like the paralysis options because I think Lugia mm -hmm. is going to start playing for like I those mean, switching it's, cards. I mean, it's good against Mew as well. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's really good against Mew. You. Um, yep. I think like it, the biggest issue obviously is to like watch out for those uh, big parasols that everyone's going to be checking in for the Yveltal and um, I mean I feel like Giratina is not really seeing as much play but you know no. um, Sableye is always a pain in the butt to deal with yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah that's that's yeah see I that's think... the that's one of my biggest fears with the is the loss zone because uh, I, I do agree with you, ODF. I think Beedrill is a, a solid play, and I was looking at it, but I was looking at it just playing it with an Inteleon engine. and, and Oh, is it like the Inteleon Charizard yeah. Beedrill deck? Okay. Yeah, just like Inteleon uh, with bees, and then you throw a Radiant Zard in there so you can hit big things as well. Yep. Um, just staying away from two prizes in general uh, to hopefully just take favorable trades the whole day. But, like, Sableye just has me worried at just getting two Sobbles to go bye-bye. You wrote, could play like, the 70 HP Sobble, honestly. But I Keep could. Calling is so good. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I could, but then I fear, calling, then I fear but... Sobble, like, Sobble Energy, no other Pokemon, no other Ball Search. And I was like, I could have Keep Calling here. But, it happens enough yeah, right. to mm. not. You are not correct. That is an option mm. I, I actually... I never really thought about because that whole 60 or 70 debate, I just, I was like, it's keep calling, keep calling and carry on. Yeah. But, keep calling. uh, keep calm, keep calling. It's actually a, a not, it's actually keep. a worthy debate at this moment because that just takes that off the table. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Beedrill definitely is going to be good. I think you have to play with Inteleon because Inteleon makes it really easy to do mustard. I think Arc Bees is pretty good because like, Arceus is V-Star power. Like, always, whenever you do Starbirth, I think you're always basically going to guarantee the uh, Mustard off of a off of a Starbirth. Like, even if you have, like, a really awkward hand, Starbirth usually gets you into the Mustard for the turn. So it turns Arceus V-Star's V-Star power into, like, basically a free Beedrill, which can turn into an Insta-KO on Lugia. Now, I guess I wanted to kind of talk about what I was going to bring to Toronto. Was, so okay. um, I have two. So I'm eyeing up two different decks for Toronto right now. Unfortunately, my third pick, Reggie's, I just kind of wrote off. I'm like, yeah, Reggie's just isn't good. Um, it's too, Lugia just hard counters. It's too much mana feed, too much on Sparse, Collapse Stadium. But um, I was testing out maybe Reggie with Thornton again. 
because you can evil tall their Lugias, but Thornton is so inconsistent. I tested right. it and. And but I may it's may not so have video. rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have recorded a video on it, but I the deck just wasn't doing it. I mean, I just can't find the Thornton in time, and I don't know. It's definitely an option, though. Reggie's could try out the Thornton build to counter Lugia. I think that has a better Lugia matchup than the straight build because you just struggle against Manaphy Dunsparce, where in this build, you at least have Evil Tall and Radiant Charizard as backup options, which does make the matchup a little bit better, but I'm still not sold on it yet. Um, so my two picks for Toronto. So the first pick I'm eyeing up is actually Arceus Beedrill Flying Pikachu, kind of the <laughs> yeah. Hexter Ian Rob deck from NEIC. I'm really debating this deck. I think that it's actually got a lot of good matchups because you basically you just go Beedrill against Lugia and you even have the Flying Pikachu. And in the build I'm using, I have two big Paracels. So you just put a big Paracel on a Flying Pikachu and you just kind of sit there and just go max rain balloon. rain go away <laughs> yeah you just you just max balloon um lukia and evil tall you max it's the big parasol is really good against lost zone decks my issue is it has a bit of an awkward tina matchup tina can still be a bit of an issue for you even with the double big parasol tina just is still kind of a problem so i'm still like 50 50 on tina but just even if tina's popular like no one might, it might not even be that popular yeah because it bricks yeah. you into bashing your head against a right, wall right yeah <laughs> it does yep it does and i'm still debating on whether or not it's better to play the uh the, the barrel package in the deck to free up space or the intellion build the problem the intellion build of the arc b pika deck is that it's very clunky and sometimes it just bricks and the barrel build is a little bit more smooth the problem mm -hmm. the barrel is the barrel build it's harder to chain mustards than in the in the intellion build it's very easy to do mustard back to back but in mm -hmm. the barrel build it's a little bit harder to pull that off i'd have to start playing cards like chromomatic um i think double vacuum could be cute because you can use it to thin a card from your hand while getting rid of big parasol so yeah I'm i, I do feel like beberol though like is kind of your safest more consistent bet like especially right, with I all the, like a lot of these lugia decks play marnie and there's a lot yeah. of roxanne still going around even though she's a lie um yeah <laughs> she kind of is <laughs> kind of is a lie no cap yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I think that, if you go all, i think the barrel solid yeah, they're all lies. All they ever do is lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that that is something that I am trying out. The Arc B Pika deck. I'm going to probably be testing that. And then my other pick, my secret deck, which I'm really considering, and that's actually going to be a Lugia deck, but it's a different kind of Lugia deck. It's actually Lugia with Mewtwo V Union. Ah! Let's which go. <laughs> I have high hopes for the. Uh, so I got second place at Locals with it this past Friday, and the deck really impressed me. Actually, fun story about that. Um, I didn't have enough Lugia V's at the time because I went to my game store. I went to my game store that day and I was like expecting them to just have enough Lugias in stock, mm -hmm. and they didn't. They were actually sold out of Lugia V's, and I'm like, oh no, I can't play this deck. So I was scrambling. <laughs> Every time somebody came in, I had to ask them for Lugia, and they're like, oh, I don't got any extras. I'm like, crap. But luckily, somebody came in and she saved my life. She had a place at a Lugia, so I, well, I only needed two of them, but she had a place at a Lugia, so I bought them off of her. Thankfully, and I literally bought them off of her about like two minutes before the tournament started so i just right got the lugias in time and then i got second with the deck my only loss was to a lugia matchup and it was because my star was a little bit more slower and i wasn't able to you know catch up in time but basically the cause of the mewtwo is it's more of like mewtwo is more of a late game card more than anything else so you you kind of play like a lugia deck i got the charizard in the deck i don't play stellin which i'm considering adding though i think the deck autos lost box anyways um but you go like lugia you go, you Lugia, and you just kind of work towards the Mewtwo V Union. I don't play a Peonia, so that is something that I'm thinking about. But I don't think the Peonia is good because I feel like you never really... It's not a good card in the deck, so I, I don't know if I really want to play it. But you just go Lugia, Lugia, and then you work towards Mewtwo V Union in the background. With all the discarding and cards you have, it's actually not too hard to pull off the Mewtwo. Right. I already have Burnett in the deck, so we already have like a natural way to do that. And you put the Mewtwo in play, and you use Archeops, like three or four horror psychic energies on it. Or you go like three horror psychics with a V-Guard energy. It has its ability, makes it so Evil Tall can't KO you. So you have an instant immunity against Evil Tall. You have a spread attack. You have Final Burn, which I do play double belt. You just go like belt, final burn, knock anything on your active spot. Um, you can kind of beat Lost Box by just constantly healing over and over again. 
Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of my idea there. Though you might deck out before they do, but it depends really on the scenario. And then you're a freaking evil genius. Right? I, I think the Mewtwo is honestly just kind of cracked. I'm still debating on how the list is made, but I'm very much considering this deck for Toronto. I think it actually has a pretty good mirror match for Lugia because right. as long as you don't prize Lugia or your Mewtwo or you find it in time, the deck's actually like it just pops off. And again, having that immunity to evil tall, being able to one shot anything like the tank Lugia, for example. Tank Lugia, I just go belt Mewtwo final burn, you're dead. Yeah. And you also you have the horror psychic energies if if i get hit you're gonna take 60 damage and depending on the numbers i have mm. psy explosion the deck has a lot of plays one of the plays i actually found in one of the lugia mirror matches i was in i noted my opponent was pivoting between the lugias there's two lugias in play with like 230 damage on each of them and i was like oh if i get mutant play i go psy explosion i'm gonna get a nice little four prize turn here <laughs> Um, the other debate in the deck is really the extra attacker. Um, so I'm going back with Charizard and Crobat VMAX. Crobat VMAX for Mew, basically, you go Crobat VMAX against Mew, you put a V-Guard energy on a Crobat with double Aurora, and Mew's going to have a hard time one-shotting you, and you kind of just max cutter them, and then you can also use Mewtwo in that matchup, which can be good against Mew, obviously. Um, and then I have the Charizard. It's just there for, like, the mirror match if I prize Mewtwo pieces and I can't find them in time, because I'm not playing the Peonia, and I don't think I'm going to play the Peonia. Um, so if I, it's like if I prize Mewtwo pieces, I can always find them. I can always just go like Radiant Charizard and play like a bit of a dumbed down version of, Mew, of Lugia. Right. Um, but that's that's uh, that's my other top pick for uh, Toronto. It's uh, the Mewtwo Lugia deck, and I'm really bent on this deck. That's LDF. pretty spicy. LDF just made me. Uh, why not <laughs> question made me yourself? Just go get Lugias. <laughs> like I was to the not lab. <laughs> go. <laughs> That I kind of want. That I kind of want to try. All the other versions of Lugia, I don't. I haven't had the interest. Yeah, I, I want to try that. I, I want to try that. Mm -hmm. Everything you said sounds great, and it, in practice, it does sound like you have match like answers for anything. My only concern yep. um, is consistency, um, prize consistency, mm -hmm. and just setup. Obviously, that that's four dead cards or what whatever you want to call well, it. That could seven potentially... dead cards a lot right. of the time. Right. So the like, that stuff. that could potentially. Um, hurt your early game and that's where i find find that lugia gen generally struggles is that that early game what is your opening hand look like um right and that's the only thing that worries me but once you get past that i feel like that that, that is pretty spicy and then yeah they could just wreck, wreck I, anybody I, for sure i just look yeah. at it as like yeah the they, they, on the board mm, go on i was just say that i just look at it as like the mutus on the board and you just have like a menu in front of you like what do i want to use like like <laughs> right mm, yeah nom, exactly nom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the thing with Mewtwo, it's like you have like a way to just one shot stuff. A lot of the time, Mewtwo is not dying, so it's gonna sit there for a turn. So at least you're gonna get two knockouts with it. And right. depending on how you map your your game out, it should just win you the game no problem. Um, yeah, I think its issue really is consistency. I'm still going back and forth on it. I originally had Adventures Discovery, but I cut that out of the deck because that card sucks. Um, I'm going back we and forth be between so Double good. Burnett. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like I like the Mewtwo a lot. I think it's really spicy. I don't think a lot of people are gonna see it coming. Um, right. It might be a little annoying against like decks with Drapion. Drapion is a bit of an issue because they can Mirage Gate to it or Archeops to it and then Drapion your Mewtwo, which would feel very bad. But uh, I do like the deck. I'm still kind of going back and forth with what I want to play. I'm debating on playing Path myself so that I can... So against Duraludon, you can just go Path, Final Burn, Choice Belt, they're dead. Or you Final Burn them and then they attack you. They take damage from Horror, Psychic Energy, and they get knocked out. So still going back and forth on the deck. Against Duraludon, you can also go... Four horror psychic, they hit you for 220, and then you heal 200. They take 80, they hit you, they take 80, and then you just loop that over and over until you size explosion and knock them out. So that is pretty, spicy. Yeah, I'm I'm like figuring out the deck. And against Lost Box, you can either heal loop or you can spread damage. So um, the Lost, the Giratina matchup would also be good. They can't start Requiem you. Um, so yeah, like the it's basically just like a Lugia deck. You still have to deal with the Lugias, and then eventually you have to deal with Mewtwo. That's kind of the process. Mewtwo can also go through Mill Tank, so it's another thing to kind of take note of. Um, it sure. can go through a lot of weird like cheese cards. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking about the deck. Most likely gonna play it because I think it's spicy. If I can get on stream at some point, um, that, I'm, I've, you know, go, I said go for it. I say play that. Do it. Yeah. Don't play. Don't play anything else. Play that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I'm. Pro I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. Once I kind of. I'm going to chill with the Shuffle Squad tomorrow night. I'm going to tweak the list and uh, refine it, and I think we're going to we'll be cooking up yeah, something special I, I don't want to see uh, you since until it's, it's since we can, <laughs> and, uh, Until it's done. <laughs> since we can make a little prediction, like round five LDF on stream with mm -hmm. this deck, if you, as long yeah. as you play it. So mm -hmm. I see that if you play hopefully, that, hopefully. I, they, they find a way to put you on stream. 
Yeah, I think they get, will. I mean, Chip, uh, Chip, Chip if, scouting you over here. <laughs> if Chip gives me another interview like he did last time, I was the first person to get the interview at Baltimore, and Chip asked what I was playing. I'm like, oh, I'm on Reggie's. So if Chip asks, if Chip pulls me to the side again for another interview for for the stream, I'll literally just be like, yeah, I'm playing Lugia Mewtwo B Union. And then Chip's going to be like, oh, my God, he's going to be mind blown. And then yeah. he's like, we got to get you on stream. He's going to be like, yeah, you're coming yeah, on stream. For yeah. sure. But I can't, I kind of want to transition into like talking about like some tournament prep stuff slash like tournament things that could like happen right. uh, i kind of i kind of want to touch a little bit of lin tea time i kind of want to touch on the whole situation um with you know the, the split sleeves and and mm -hmm. people getting dq'd for that and um uh so like basically what because i i think one of you guys hadn't heard yeah, I I didn't um, hear this uh, until like pre yeah, pre game. Yeah, so talk. so um, James Cox, I believe he got like fourth or fifth in world at Worlds. Mm -hmm. um, I think he might have got fourth at Worlds this, uh, last year. Um, very established player. He had posted a picture on Twitter of one of his sleeves kind of like peeled at the at the top corner, like a very common like split that can right. happen with yep. with um, sleeves, like. I don't necessarily think it was intentional by any means. It, I'm not in a place where I even can judge that because I'm not a Pokemon judge. So that being said, it, he he got DQ'd from LAIC because of that. Um, I think he said that it was like a Luminion. And so like I kind of just wanted to like talk a little bit about that. I know like a lot of people are having a lot of different opinions, but like, I mean, it's, mm. I don't know. Like it, it was it's one tough. single card that it was. Is. It was one single card that was quote unquote marked. I, th I think there was like maybe a couple that split, but that one was like a very obvious split. Which like, if it happened during a game, you know, like the first thing anyone should do is you know call a judge, mm -hmm. yep. um, and get the situation handled. But but if it did happen in between rounds, you know, it is our responsibility to be checking, be be, be checking our stuff, be checking our decks in between rounds. I know it's stressful. It's another thing to worry about, but it's. It's just one of those things, and maybe it can just be like a learning lesson for people. Yeah, I mean, if I, I mean, I don't think it was intentional, right? You know, he wasn't intending yeah. to cheat. You know, I don't think James Cox would do that. No. You know, I know he's like kind of he's kind of an up and coming creator. I know he's making content on YouTube. Like, I don't think he would want to risk his reputation to like cheat at LEIC. So I think it was definitely right. like obviously like non intentional. But I agree. It's like when you go into a tournament, there's a reason why a lot of people just buy fresh new sleeves for a tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't. Probably did. Hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I I definitely buy fresh sleeves, and I have a second, you know, box of fresh sleeves that with the same yeah. color, just in case. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like it was intentional to me. And it sounds no. Like I I forget what tournament it was. Um, you know, within the last calendar year, um, that somebody did get DQ'd for for um having sleeves that were marked, but it was four sleeves, and they were all on what four specific cards of. Now that's obviously. A, a situation where you could i would agree with the with the dq um but if it's if it's a, you know a few different cards random cards that aren't matching um a dq seems a little um a little harsh for me uh maybe yeah. a warning or something um i i don't know the i mean yeah a warning might have been more fair you mm -hmm. know the part that got me in, in in reading through his his post was that he was DQ'd without given the option to ever resleeve it, like, like there mm. was no like, hey, we spotted this, like, it's one thing, like I would say if like this was like the second time that you were like warned about a split sleeve on a card in a tournament, but like throughout a tournament, if someone if they look at a deck check, or you could make a judge call and they go, okay, hey. Your sleeve split like you should instantly get like can you replace this like and yeah if you replace it you just go on playing like that's that's your one like if you yep. constantly split then obviously you're trying like I, well, not obviously but you like that it's could be a like a, how are you are you trying to mark this kind of thing it's a little bit more yeah. suspect but like if you don't get yeah. one free like oh it because this happens like this isn't like the f like it's not like anyone's created indestructible sleeves that don't split <laughs> right ever during a tournament so like this could happen to anybody at any point in time and if you just happen to get deck checked after that one game you're dq'd like that's a little over the over the top for me so 
if yep. that was the part that was like that just too much because he was never offered the uh, opportunity to re-sleeve even the entire deck if if need be but like he wasn't right. given the opportunity yep. to change sleeves no nor given the opportunity to appeal apparently mm-hmm I thought you were yeah, always I, it, given that opportunity if need be. I, I yeah. think it's something that's like maybe not said each time, but because I, I don't think that they like explicitly say whenever something happens, you have the right to appeal. I think that's just something that everyone, not not even everyone, that's just something that like people know, and like right. you, yeah, you, you should like kind of know you have that right. Right. You always have the right to appeal every thing to the head judge of the tournament, even if they don't explicitly say that you can. not They should. But but should again, say that you can. Yeah. yeah, they should say that you can appeal this if you want. But uh, like, uh, not every judge is the same, and it may he may slip his mind that he didn't say that. But you can always appeal any kind of ruling at any point to the head judge. And that's probably what should have happened. I, I I heard the LAC judges were not like the best. Like they did some pretty like. They did a lot of like really strict things that like just com- they- there's another senior who got DQ'd for basically apparently his dad was signaling to him during one of his matches or something or when they were warming up or whatever and he Supposedly. got DQ'd from the tournament. And- oh, and didn't even tell him, but like they they de- DQ'd him and didn't even like let them know or something really? like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is just really silly. And again, he didn't get a chance to appeal or anything. And I, I- it's just I don't know, man. Like the the LASC judges seem to be kind of like just not. I don't know if they. I, they just felt like they just didn't give people a chance to do anything. They were just like DQ'd. It's like right, yeah. Like was it like, last year's LAC when it came to that uh, that Malamar deck? Was it uh, was that at LAC when he, he played the Rapid it? Strike Josiah? Yeah, was it that? Yeah, maybe the maybe they wanted to not be it, having that reputation where somebody got away with cheating in their stream. Yeah, like maybe they right. went Too overboard. Loose. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's like it. Yeah, I don't know. It, I, I hope that the Toronto judges are better. They could have just been more of like a like a thing with like LAIC specifically. Like Toronto could be different. Um, I do hope Pokemon kind of look into the these two issues a little bit more, especially the other one with the uh, the senior that uh, that got DQ'd. Mm. Like I think that was just like that's like a really that's like a mess. So I, I think definitely Pokemon should maybe look into the the whole situation here with both of these and kind of figure out what went wrong and. What what would they can change for the future, and maybe do something to like give them like give the people that got DQ'd some kind of I don't even know. Maybe just give them something. I don't I don't know. Right. Like well, especially the senior who got like really wrongly like I don't know. It's right. just like the whole situation just sucks, and it just really hope that this stuff this type of stuff just doesn't happen again. Right. I agree. Yeah. And I think with that all out of the way, we are going to wrap up today's episode of the Shuffle Pod with the Pittsburgh Podcast. So pretty good talk. Obviously, this episode. We'll be going up right after Toronto, so it'll be cool to see what we said, and maybe, who knows, maybe one of us does really well, and who knows, maybe Lugia Mewtwo is a deck that not only I thought of, but other people thought of, and it becomes you a imagine? big imagine? Right? That'd be pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. That'd be pretty sick. Because um, I, I don't talk to, like, many of the pro players, like, at all, so I don't know what, like, people are thinking, but hey, you know what? This deck could be a thing. Um, but with that all the way, do y'all want to kind of plug any of your socials? The floor is yours. Chuck, you go first. All right. Well, uh, personally, you can you can find me on on Twitter. Uh, that's the the big place I hang out at. I guess at Watch Whimsy uh, is the is the the handle, uh, and then uh, just on the pod or in our Discord server, which you can find via the pod. Um, so that's it. Find me at Watch Whimsy and on the pod, Jake. Right. Uh, Twitter for myself um, at Panux One. Um, and again, at Pit Pokey Pod on Twitter as well. Uh, we have a Discord server uh, that we, you know, we talk all things Pokemon with our local community. Uh, we have online leagues. Uh, so if you ever wanted to join us and uh, be a part of our community, we that's one way to reach out. Um, above that, yeah, just uh, every week we we do a weekly weekly podcast. It's been almost three years now, um, mm-hmm. and it's a we drop it every Wednesday. Um, you know, we, like I said, kind of earlier, um, our, the goal of our podcast is to help the community grow as, as a player base. Um, you know, if you're a beginner player, um, we cater to that. If you're more, uh, more seasoned, we cater to that as well. Have awesome guests on too, to kind of help drive that improvement. Um, like the two of you guys, um, we've had also oh, so many awesome, um, people on our podcast too. So that's, 
uh, what we do as a podcast. So if you you want to you know grow as a player, yeah. come check us out at at Pit, uh, or uh, Triple P, the Pittsburgh Pokemon Podcast. And you can find us that anywhere. Is a tongue twister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can find us anywhere that you usually find podcasts on Spotify, Apple Pod, Google Pod, all that fun places. So if you want to hear two guys talk competitive Pokemon, usually in a fun, light banter way, that's us. And we do, like Jake said, get some cool guests to show off the community. We like to uh, highlight the community as much as we possibly can from our little neck of the woods. 100%. Right. Yeah. And I guess, actually, before we end, you just brought up Spotify. I forgot Spotify Wrapped came out today. So I don't know if anyone listening to this podcast episode has, I guess, any of our two podcasts on their year-end uh, Spotify Wrapped. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I just wanted to put that out there if anyone had any of our podcast or my our podcast or Pitcher podcast or whatever. Yeah. If they're, if you're, if our podcast is on your Spotify Wrapped year-end top five, appreciate it. We and, appreciate uh, your ears listening yes, to us. We For really sure. do. And we hope to see you around in 2023. For sure. Before before one we forgot to do shout outs. I do want to give a shout out to our uh our podcast sponsor, uh Sports Card Junction. Uh they they help us uh give back to the community as well. Um so um give them a, a look as well um and also all of our awesome community uh, local community guys uh, there's just too many to to um you know to shout out individually but i uh, love our uh community uh so much and then um yeah that was, that's basically it there <laughs> well said well said well that'll be it for us and we will catch you all next week for another episode of the shuffle pod peace The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. PokeXWord, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. We have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing. Expect expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.